Okay, so hello everyone. We are the Wildcat Solar Team from Illinois University. And our district use case is, as the whole groups are doing here, the California State University, Northridge. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we have um, six members in our team, Queen, Viviana, Fabiano, Lam, me, um, Antonio, and Ryan. So today we have Queen and Viviana and me um, in, our, um, in our team. Uh, we have a advisor, um, Dr. Pitao Singh, and industrial mentor, Anthony Hall. Um, next slide, please. So for the competition goal, we are to design a solar plus storage system for the campus that maximizes electricity offset at the lowest cost. We're given 50-minute interval data for 45-meter facilities, and no PPAs are allowed in our, um, our district uh, use. Uh, next slide. And so, first of all, for the campus sustainability goals. So the campus aims to integrate sustainability into all aspects of the university. Um, this is to aim to achieve net zero emissions by 2040. So approximately 20 megawatts DC of solar by 2040 is required to eliminate campus facility um, electricity related emissions. Um, the campus already generated 1.4 megawatts DC and needs to generate 18.6 megawatts DC left to meet the goal. So in terms of the design priorities, um, CSUN desires to reduce its peak demand cost, um, offset EV load charging. They also stated that they desire EV charging to be installed in or near PP, um, the physical plant management yard, that's the PPM building. And in terms of energy resiliency, CSUN desires to have backup power for three of its buildings with critical load, load that is Redwood Hall, Oviat Hall, and Student Union student, university student building, union building rather. So now I'm gonna pass it up to Vivi for the conceptual design. Next slide, please. So in terms of the conceptual design, we started designing the solar system considering the 34 buildings from the list and the six carports area. First of all, we identified the list of buildings and the distribution system. Then we added the EV low in the specific areas according to the map. With that information, we were able to summarize the maximum power demand and the yearly consumption per building. We use Heliscope and Aurora Solar to design the PV system for a 10 degree tilt angle and also south facing orientation with a cut-off shading of 10%. With that information from the software, we got the annual generation and the consumption per system. After that, we were able to run the financial analysis and select the 14 systems that are highlighted in the picture with a maximum PPA of $0.082. Next slide, please. Now we have details about our designs. So first of all, we had the 13 rooftop PV systems that are integrated into the grid 12.2 megawatts DC. And also we have one design of carpet that are integrating 348.5 kilowatts DC. As an example of how we also put it the EV load to our system, we have the parking structure G6, as can be seen in the figure, that we are offsetting the EV load during the day. As a summary of the demand and generation of the selected system, we are showing here how was the system side, the, year, the yearly generation and the consumption as well. Next slide, please. Now we can see how was the behavior of the demand over one day for all the system. As well, we have here the energy generation per hour for all the system. We have classified all our system depending on the substation that they belong to. And we have here a table summarizing all the electrical aspects in terms of generation and power. Next slide, please. Now we can see in this table, how was the system equipment for each of them? We have the number of solar panels and the number of inverters. In each of the system, we were able to get the one line diagram that is specifying the electrical configuration for the solar panel and for the inverter to be able to be connected to the grid. Next slide, please. In terms of the details of the modules, we have selected the SunPower SPR Max 3 425 with a really high efficiency of 22.7%, a warranty of 40 years, the lead free clear ingredients and recycling process, and also the SunPower company is listed at tier one manufacturing in US. 
for more details about the electrical and mechanical data, we have this table presented here. Next slide, please. Now we can see what were the uh, considerations in terms of inverters. We have selected the SMA company, the Sony 3 power model with three with six different powers. So we have the Sony 3 power core one 33, 50, and 62. And also the Sony 3 power 24, 17, 15 kilowatts TL. So all of them has a really high efficiency, 97 to 98.7 percent, uh, a standard warranty of 10 years that could be extended to 20 years. And in terms of the electrical safety, we have the R fault detention, the ground fault protection, the DC reverse polarity protection, and also we have included this inverter to the system because it has the voltage regulation capability. Next slide, please. Now we can see what we did in terms of the distribution impact analysis when we were integrating the battery to our systems. So we used the heat map that was provided. And we have also in each of the nodes of our system that are highlighted here in red, the maximum PV penetration for each of them. Also, we have considered the big shading and also the resiliency of them. So for that reason, we selected the maximum power demand for each of the system as the power of our battery. And in terms of the capacity, we are using two hours of capacity as is listed in this table. Next slide, please. So in terms of the peak shaving, we want to show as an example, for example, uh, as an example, we can see here that in the blue line in the, in the corner to the right, we can see that the blue line is the demand and the green line is the PV generation. So during the day, we are really upsetting what was the load in this, in this system that is the obvious hole. The next one, please. Then in terms of the resilience. So in some cases, we have buildings as the USU building that the energy consumption is higher than the energy generated by the PV system. So in, term, in that case, the battery is set for self-consumption in case of outage only and will charge from the grid after that. So we identified the two hours with the highest gap between consumption and generation. And we set our hypothetical outage within that window. Next slide, please. So now we have the financial analysis and Queen will talk about that. Thank you. So in, thanks, Lee. In terms of the financial analysis, we used an average PV cost of $1.262 per watt. And for the battery, we use um, a cost of $132 per kilowatt hour. Uh, we didn't consider debt because we assume that the project is integrated into a larger $50 million um, dollar pro um, portfolio. In terms of tax, we considered an ITC of um, 30%. Um, the utility rate, we had to calculate the average utility rate for the year because we had for different seasons. And we came to a, a cost of $0.04 cents, um, per kilowatt hour. Remember, PPAs are not allowed. So what we are considering is just direct purchase and lease, monthly lease payments. Other costs considered were um, the closing cost of $1 million for all the systems. No excess was considered because the, uni you, the university aims to claim its environmental benefits to meet its sustainability goals. In terms of the O&M and um, yearly O&M and insurance costs, we consider the cost of $0.01 um, cents per award um, with um, 2% escalation rates and 2.5% escalation rate respectively. The contract term for this financial analysis was 25 years and the projected IRR was 7.5 with um, zero MPV. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so initially we run, we designed um, PV systems for 34 buildings and we noticed immediately negative customer savings for all the buildings. So out of these buildings, what we did was we selected, um, and I think this was because of the very low rate of the utility, um, the very low utility rate. So out of these 34 buildings, we selected 14. 14 buildings with um, very high generation with a, with a relatively comparable um, um, PPA rate. Um, so out of all these 14 buildings, what we had was that the, the highest PPA rate was 0 0.8, was 8 cents. Um, this 14 buildings gave us a total of 12.6 megawatts. And um, for CSOM, we are um, recommending that the 
direct outrightly because that's cheaper as you can see from the table. Um, the leasing price is almost twice that of the direct purchase. Can we go to the next slide please? After the addition of storage, we still had a negative MPV. So what we decided to do was to have storage for three of the buildings, the buildings with critical loads. That's Oviat, um, Redwood, and University Student Union Building. Those are the buildings we're recommending storage for. Next slide, please. The size of those batteries for the three systems is gonna be 4.5 megawatt hour, and the cost is approximately $600,000. Um, so in summary, we're saying that yes, we have negative cost saving, but the cost of electricity from this PV systems remain fixed to remain, pre it's gonna be predictable for the next 25 years, unlike the utility rates, which um, fluctuates. And also by implementing this 14 um, PV systems, um, CISON would have about 14 megawatts, would will help drive their 20 megawatts goal for um, sustainability goal for 2014. Um, next slide, please. Now I'll pass it to Lam for the development plan. Thank you. So um, the uh, project would comply to the master plan by aligning with university desire for a cohesive and sustainable aesthetic. So for carports, they would integrate with the landscape of the, of the campus, while PV systems on top of uh, as roof structure would uh, stay on top of buildings, which would be out of sight. And these uh, developments um, also help reducing carbon footprint and energy independence, which is the core goal of our project. Um, this affects different agents within the campus. For example, students and faculty would benefit from blackouts prevention. Um, local businesses, can you go back to the previous slide a bit? Oops, thank you. So for local businesses, they would um, benefit from employment, from constructions and ONM. And these um, PV systems could engage with the community by having workshops or um, acting as learning materials for specific majors, as well as could act as a point of advertisement for potential applicants. All right, now next slide. Okay, so the authority having jurisdiction here is um, the university itself. However, for any of the installations, they have to get permits uh, and follow the Californian building standards. So for applicable audiences, um, PV systems can be built on rooftops and parking structures according to the classification here as the public facility zone. So no rezoning is required. Um, codes and permits, um, different codes and permits must be get to finish this project, they can be acquired from LA Fire Department or LDBS. Um, next slide. Uh, okay, so for the timeline, we expect our installation to be within eight months. So the first two months would be spent for project proposal and approval, as well as applying permits and um, getting approvals from departments. Um, the third month would be spent for ordering materials, having contractors, subcontractors, and review of materials and start deploying. Month four to month eight would be spent to um, construction for construction and interconnections within different structures throughout the campus. So the expected start is from June 2024. It will be done by February 2025. And next slide. Finally, this is our conclusion. We have uh, design system with 13 PV roof systems and one carport, as well as three batteries for resiliency. Total size 12.6 megawatts DC, annual gener energy generated almost 22 gigawatt hours, two hours of resiliency, resiliency acquired and with 4.5 megawatt hour battery. Um, for our financials, we can predict electricity costs over the next 25 years in contrast to fluctuating utility rates. And finally, with our development plan, we can align ourselves with the development plan and campus aesthetic vision, as well as generate 12.6 megawatts DC out of the 20 megawatts DC goal of the campus to be net zero. Um, it complies with the California zoning building code. So the construction will have less risk than actually building um, advanced PV systems. And finally, it benefits members within the campus community and the neighboring community. And yep, that's it for our presentation. And thank you all for listening.